Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How you doing? It's a big porky here. The voice of hardcore boxing. Now... Pretty cold day today, isn't it? But we're just going to get straight stuck in with these videos before I go meet Dennis. I think I've got to go meet Gaz and I from workshop later. Uh, what next for you Fury? What next for you Fury? What next for you Fury? Uh, I don't really know what next for you to be honest. Uh, two seconds. Yeah, I'm filming, mate. I'll give you a, a bell when I leave here. Now I've got that matching video and I've found it, mate. All right, you're on me back, catalog. Uh, right, point I want to make is Yui Fury. What next for Yui Fury? And uh, people asking in emails, am I going to be helping Yui Fury moving forward? Uh, no, I'm not going to be helping you move forward. Uh, I never really did help you move forward. It was basically uh, I helped a little bit behind the scenes with strength and conditioning and a pad man. I brought a strength and conditioner on board for Peter, and I brought Robbie Reed on board to do the pads. That's it. I was asked if I could help out. I said yes, please. And that's it, and you, you help your friends, don't you? It, it doesn't make me an expert. It wasn't me, all, it wasn't me holding the pads, it was Robin Reed who did a 14 week of it. You know, two days a week. Bunny were there for nine weeks, doing strength and conditioning. Huey started out, I'm not gonna say how many pull-ups he could do when he started, but when you, after nine weeks, he could do a lot more than when he started, so that's positive, isn't it? Uh, but no, I'm not helping out this time. Uh, they were matching them, aren't they? Uh, I'm still in touch with Peter and I wish you all the best. But this video is called What Next for Yui Fury? Now, what I think would, would have been a, a better idea for Yui would be. Oh. What I think would be better for Yui is. What I told Peter when we got off an aeroplane in Bulgaria, that was September, or oh, end of September 2018. I said, in my opinion, I think Yui needs to develop a style and have 10 fights. Have 10 fights, knockovers, and then build them up to, to, to good opposition. But have 10 fights, away from the limelight but it's going to be hard isn't it for Yui because Yui's dad's famous or infamous call it what you want Peter has been infamous and he's also been famous and in his own right because he trained his nephew to win the heavyweight championship of the world four of the five belts and the ring magazine so basically we could call it five of the six belts peter fury laid the game plan down laid the game plan down and his nephew tyson fury did it to a t he took vladimir klitschko to score so as far as i'm concerned that makes peter fury one of the greatest trainers in the world now the septics who keep emailing me saying i'm hanging out at back of peter fury and blah de blah and keep going on about ah oh, you were in jail at same time and blah de blah and I look Peter Fury is a mate of mine right can we say I always agree with everything he does but he's a pal isn't he he's also <laughs> he's also a, a guy that doesn't put up with people that talk rubbish around him he doesn't have fools around him you're not going to have any plant pots around him at all. He just keeps it real. 
he's probably the straightest talking bloke that you're going to meet in boxing. He keeps it real. Uh, has it worked for him so far? Well, you is looking at having his third fight with Matthew Montrot and he's only 25 years of age. He's already fought for a world title and won the fight but didn't get the decision. He's already won a British title. He's already won a gold medal at World Juniors. So he's done all that and he's 25 years of age. So if he's done all that at that age and he get, he's, he's took Povetkin distance and getting, you know, I won't say it were life and death, but if he'd uh, thrown his right hand a bit more, I think he could have won that fight. He nearly got pool left out there in round eight, were it? He had a bad cut. He went, what were he, 23 then? Just turned 23, 24. He's still a baby, isn't he? You is. Plenty of time. This is why I said to Peter when we spoke about it, and Peter Fury, listen, people can call him a brain thief. People can call him a student of the game. I personally just like to call him a pal who, if you've got an opinion, will listen. He won't just tell you you're talking rubbish. He's prepared to listen. Now, obviously, he would have asked everybody's opinion, Peter, who were in that camp. You know, there were me, Dennis, Johnny Roy. Uh, is it Tom from Applied Nutrition? There's all them sort of people that are, uh, you know, who were out in Bulgaria, Robin Reed. You know, he, he would have asked his family, what next for you here? That's going back 18 months ago or, or 16 months ago. And everybody would have said that what they think that you should do. And I said, go and develop a style and stick to it. That style. Because, um, you know, he's still, he's still got loads of uh, time left, hasn't he? You? He's a babby. Has he been rushed? I don't know, opportunities come, don't they? But like I've just said, I said, look, I think that you should go have 10 fights away from the limelight. Don't forget, when Huey fights, he's in the limelight, he's got cameras thrust in his face every two minutes and sometimes uh, you know a lot of kids don't 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 like that they feel uncomfortable with it but you always had that now ever since he turned pro you know he, you know, people say oh, he's Tyson's cousin and all that well look he's a world ranked fighter in his own rights no matter what you say no matter what you think or whatever you he's just He's a top 15 heavyweight in the world, isn't he? Now, you can make a case for him being in top 10. I put him in the top 15 for the simple reason that I don't think he's as active as the others to be a top 10. But he's capable of beating any heavyweight on his day in the world. And I think any, any of them top 15 can beat each other. I think Tyson outpoints a lot of them. I think Wilder knocks out a lot of them, but on any given day in that top 15, any of them can beat anybody. Now, people are going to say, oh, you're doing a video here to hang out at the back of them. I mean, that's disgusting talk, that, isn't it? When people send me stuff like that, I'm not I'm looking at positive start stuff of it. Do you know what I mean? Uh, well, the point I'm trying to make is, you always got plenty of time on his hands. Still a baby still a baby so there's no rush but i would still like to see him away from the limelight and go go get his ten, nine or ten wins on the trot you know and be 33 and free instead of is it 23 and free or something like that or that's what i thought 24 and free so, look he's had three defeats on him one of them you could say is not a defeat the other one's a bad cut and the other one he got all manned out of it, so it's not doom and gloom, is it? There's plenty to build on. It's just that I think that people need to get off his case and stop giving him an hard time. And I'm not just saying that because I'm a pal of his dad's, because I've probably, I've had about 30 or 40 words spoke between me and Yui in all the time I've known him. He's a very quiet kid. We can fight and they're big on footwork and that, and his footwork's, magical same as Tyson's is their footwork is <laughs> second to none they, they, they practice it they drilled on it and it's second nature to them they're very hard to clip very hard to it you he's never been down has he yet 
you know, in a fight as a professional or amateur every day. But I'd still like to see Yui away from cameras. But it's a business, and when Matchroom come calling with a five fight deal, you're going to be in fights, aren't you? Because of his second name. So, Yui is always going to be in limelight. And I think that's a shame, really, because I think that it'd be better if Yui just took a step back and probably fought on free sports with Ennis and had 10 fights fighting on our shows and learning his craft a bit more and, and, and going back to the drawing board again. I don't want Peter to be in this situation in two years from now when you is 27, pushing 28, saying, do you know what? I think you were right, we should have just took him out at limelight. But like I say, it's a business and people have bills to pay, don't they? And, and all sorts, so I wish you if you were all the best. Has he got talent to win a world title? You bet he has. Is he good enough? You bet he is. Is his dad good enough to train him to a world title? You bet he is. Because he's done it before, hasn't he? So, why can't he do it again? Of course he can. If Parker or Ruiz can win a world title, you if you really can, can't he? Because I had you beating Parker. So, alright. So, I just want to uh, mention, I just want to finish off on this. People keep asking me, will Dillian White and Derek Chisora fight for a third time? Yeah, they will. I think Anthony Joshua is going to fight Dylan White this, this year. I think Joshua, if he beats Dylan White, and if Usek beats Derek Chisora, right, what will happen is, Chisora, after he's lost to Usek, and Dillian, if he loses to Joshua, Chisora and Dillian will, will get a pay-per-view and I think that'll probably be their last pay-per-views for the loser. I think Joshua beats Dillian and I think on points in a stinker where he runs away from Dillian's left up and I think Usek beats Chisora, stops him. But it could go to points, but I think he stops him. And he, and the losers, Chisora against White, I think Dillian White mows down Chisora in a trilogy on pay-per-view. And I think that's Dillian's, that's Chisora's third and final pay-per-view. Carl Froch had three, by the way. And I think Chisora gets out of boxing then. Having not won a world title. I think Dillian will be on the comeback trail after beating Chisora in a trilogy. That's just Porky looking into his crystal ball. So, alright, but the title of this video is going to be called What Next for Yui Fury. Alright, so we're flying through the videos today, aren't we? So, peace out, keep on trucking, keep supporting boxing. Shout out to AJ Hobson at Innovation Alloys. Thank you very much. Boom, boom. Shout out to Kevin Hall, South Yorkshire Packaging. And shout out to them that tried to break in here on a Saturday night. You're on camera, trying to do it. So well done, all right, well done. Okay, so that's what sort of people we've got out there. But whatever you've done, if you're trying to get rid of me here, you ain't got a prayer, I'm still here. And like I said, all them people that keep trying to stop channeling, do everything they can to unsettle me and what I'm doing behind the scenes. <laughs> You're failing terribly. <laughs> Boom.